Divine Truth Theme Discussions Discussions between Jesus and Mary about specific topics and issues This is session 13, part 3 of the discussion God's Laws of Forgiveness and Repentance where Jesus and Mary continue to discuss God's principles and laws of forgiveness and repentance and the role of the human conscience answering questions relating to the conscious mechanism itself emotions and parental and societal beliefs. This session was recorded on the 21st of March 2018 from 11 a.m. in Wilstow, Queensland, Australia. Let's move on to our final set of questions. Mm -hmm. This is questions uh, relating to, uh, about the conscience that relate to family and society. Mm -hmm. And again, we should mention here that session 11, we spent a lot of time on that. So that's two sessions ago, two mm -hmm. recording sessions ago in this series. We did spend a lot of time discussing those matters. Mm -hmm. But today we will go, um, uh, we'll just touch again briefly on how parents and societal beliefs impact upon the conscience. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll try and talk about some more positive things about how education can actually assist us mm -hmm. to become more sensitive to the conscience mm -hmm. uh, and, and about actually connecting personally with the conscience. Mm -hmm. Yep. How can parents assist their children to live by conscience or in harmony, with, in tune with their conscience, with the conscience? Well, obviously, um, when a child arrives at the time of conception in the womb, the child's conscience mechanism is absolutely perfect and there is no detunement at that particular point to mm -hmm. its conscience mechanism. Of course, it's not able to understand things very easily because it's completely undeveloped at this stage. So, so it is very open to receiving messages via the conscience, but, but ha has yet to have the intellectual and emotional cognizance of what it's actually hearing or, or feeling. And this is the reason why by the time a child is born, the very first thing it does is cry for many hours. Mm. And and, and, and often cry for many months, uh, actually, because there's so much emotional pain that it doesn't know how it got there and it doesn't, it just feels bad. Yeah. And because there's no limits to its own expression of that pain, it, it would just let that pain out naturally, which is a very good process that the child needs to go through. And parents get very distressed though about mm. that particular process. And, and as a result of that, they begin detuning the child from, from the conscience by trying to stop the child from having emotion. Mm. Right? And we've talked about that historically yeah, a, lot. a lot, you know, over the last 10 years in particular. Mm -hmm. so, so obviously, one, there, are, there are many ways that a parent can assist the child through this process, through yeah. this, pro firstly, through the process of accepting its own emotion, mm -hmm. and then through the process of beginning to understand that there is such a thing as a conscience mm -hmm. and that they can listen to it and listen to what it says and discuss what it says even. Yeah. And um, able then to make a choice or a decision about what it's going to do about the information that it's heard via the conscience. Mm -hmm. And you can, you can see that if the parent educates the child about how to deal with its own emotion properly, mm -hmm. and, accept, and the parent accepts the child's emotion, mm -hmm. and then on top of that, the parent educates the child about, about God, the conscience, the mechanism of conscience, how God can communicate truth, that God is the real parent, and it's great to be able to you know, receive this kind of truth. Mm -hmm and slowly educate and introduce this concept to the child at a young age, then what happens is the child becomes more sensitive to its, the conscience mechanism than it does to the parent's desires. Mm. Now, this is a very good thing, mm -hmm. but the, most parents think that's a very bad thing. Because <laughs> <laughs> most parents are, are interested in some level, at least, of control over their, their environment, which in includes their children, doesn't it? And also control over their beliefs. Yes. You see, most parents believe their beliefs to be true mm. and they don't want to hear any contrary mm. information about them being false. Mm. And, and they certainly don't want to hear it from their own children. Yes. And because the child, by the time they're now five or six or seven years of age, um, because the child may be, if the child by this stage was very open to hearing God's voice about it, they'll be going, Mummy, you're doing the wrong thing there. God just said blah, 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 you know, yeah. and better you're doing the wrong thing here, blah, 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 blah. And you imagine, you know, parents hearing this all day, you know, they, 
most parents, uh, given that they attach their worth to yes. what they know and everything, would be quite enraged about that. Probably. I would say some, at least I can remember some instances of that when I was a, a small child and it rapidly shut me down just that Yep. Because it was a very emotional response from my parents. And, and a very violent emotional mm. response that mm. feels bad. It's an, un yeah, yeah, it's a, an innocent sort of what seemingly feels like an innocent statement it suddenly garners this incredible response. And love is withdrawn in that moment, which, yes. is, which is the primary way parents can punish children. Yeah. Uh, you know, unlovingly punish children mm. is by withdrawing their love. Now, mm. God never does that. But, but even when we were as bad as we could ever be, God never does that, but, but parents do. Yeah. And as a result, um, most children, uh, you can see that all the parent needs to do is the opposite mm -hmm. of that. And if we really want to assist our children to live by, our con by their conscience, which is the question, mm -hmm. just do the opposite of what the average person does yeah. uh, as a parent. And what about um, encouraging within the child their own capacity to reason logically and lovingly about matters? Yeah, very important. Yeah. Very important. And the, encouraging the child to be sensitive to God's feelings about every matter mm. is very, very important too. Mm. Because most, most parents encourage the child to be sensitive to other people's feelings, in particular yes. the parents' feelings. Yes. Very damaging thing to do to mm. the child because now the child's hooked into the feelings of the parent yeah. or hooked into the feelings of society. Mm. And, and because the feelings of the parent and the feelings of society differ greatly from God's feelings about most matters, they obviously they are going to be quite detuned from God's feelings about those matters and therefore quite detuned about hearing from God about God's feelings about yeah. the matter. So there are lots of ways that a parent can assist a child to connect to the conscience mm. and to remain connected to it the rest of its life. Yeah. And that would benefit the child immensely, if, as uh, you can imagine. Obviously, and, yeah. and also not only yeah. in areas of emotion, but also in just in areas of facts. Yeah. You know, so, so mummy, wh uh, where did God come from? No, I don't know. Is the average response, right? Yeah. If there is a God at all. Yeah. And, um, ask God where God came from and yeah. maybe God can tell you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, there's a whole heap of questions that as a parent, you just can't answer because you don't know yeah. the answers, but God knows the answers. Mm. So, you know, you could share that. Mm. He can share that with the child. Uh, given, but but within the limitation of the child's cognizance, you know, yeah. it's a, it's its ability uh, of uh, and and uh, development of self awareness. Yeah. So, uh, you know, if a parent does that. Man, you imagine it's like the child be so like by the time they're a teenager, there hardly any sin at all, would there? It would know? be incredible. And uh, you know. and also a sense of uh, what I imagine um, to be like sort of an inherent sense of worth because you build that through <clears throat> your you you hear messages of the conscience, you act in harmony with them, you feel that rewarding compensatory effect that we were talking about. You're building faith in something that is good. Even if you don't yet commence even a personal, like emotional relationship with God, you're already building a sense of self through that process because you're not hooked in to, to other people and you, you are hooked into a, a kind of a, a positive um, source of information and influence, mm. yeah. Mm. Imagine. If, and not only that, Incredible. when it comes to scientific information, you'd be open to that. When it yeah. comes to spiritual information, open to that. When it comes to love information, relationship information, you're open to that. You're open to who your soulmate is, God yeah. can tell you. You're open to that. You're, yeah. you, there's so many things you're open to that would take otherwise like many years or even centuries to discover. Yeah. And yet you're open to it. Yeah. Uh, what, what kind of a life is that child going to have compared mm. to the average child who's born on the planet? Yeah. Yeah quite significantly different. Yeah. So there's a lot of very good positive things a parent can do to assist the child to live by their conscience. Yeah. Mm. Fantastic. Mm. So how does parental education help children's sensitivity to conscience? So we touched on this a little in the previous question. Mm -hmm. um, but Obviously, we, we covered a lot in session 11, 11 was it? Yep. Of, our, of our Repentance and Forgiveness series. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Um, but here, I guess um, we could talk about, you know, if a, if a parent was to attempt to, to sensitise themselves to, their, to the conscience and then actively educate 
the child about the the existence of the conscience. So in the previous question, you talked about not shutting children down to emotion mm-hmm. and allowing them to reason and, and uh, uh, encouraging inquisitiveness. What if we just like um, talk to the child about the existence of the conscience? Well, you're right. Obviously, if we talk to the child about the existence of the conscience, that's going to assist the child. But we need to bear in mind that every discussion we have with any child, the child feels our emotions about the discussion Mm -hmm. more than the child feels our words about the discussion. Mm -hmm. So unless we ourselves are more open emotionally to the discussion and in agreement with what we're discussing, it's really the child is going to feel some kind of contrary opinion coming one opinion coming from our thoughts Mm. and another set of opinions coming from our feelings Mm. now the child is going to respond primarily to our feelings not our thoughts so we may attempt to educate our child intellectually Mm -hmm. about the conscience while at the same time the emotional state our emotional state is attempting to desensitize them to their conscience yeah and that would be a very damaging thing to do Mm. Uh, because it creates a state in the child of uncertainty. Mm. For proper education to occur for a child on any subject, it requires the parent to be in emotional agreement with the intellectual statements. Yes. And and even better is that God would be in agreement to both. <laughs> <laughs> right? So yeah. so in other words, the parent needs to be very self-reflective and, and obtain God's opinion on a matter mm. and then also be self-reflective enough to say, do I share, emotionally share God's opinion on the matter? Yeah. Now that I emotionally share God's opinion on the matter, sharing this opinion with my child is not going to cause the child to be in a state of disharmony or, or doubt. Yeah. But if my feelings on the matter are very different to my thoughts on the matter, and I haven't resolved that as a parent, Mm. it's going to be quite difficult still for the child to accept what I'm saying to them as truth when what I feel as truth is quite different. The child has a threat that if they feel it is true, that the parental love will be withdrawn. And if they feel that threat, Mm. then they probably won't assimilate the information. Yeah. So, but let's assume in this answer yeah. that the parent has, decide, has, has got a God's opinion on the matter, yes. agrees emotionally with God's opinion on the matter, and then begins this process of education. Mm-hmm. Now, obviously, that's going to be of immense benefit to the child mm. because the child now wants to connect to the conscience. It's a mechanism it carries around with itself everywhere it goes, unlike the parent. The parent can't be everywhere the child is at any time, yes. whereas the conscience is always, God is always with the child, mm. and the conscience mechanism is built in the soul, so it's always with the child. So, so the child gen- begins to get to the stage of trusting that more than it trusts its own parents, which is a very good thing, in fact. Yeah. And the beauty of that is that the parents will probably learn many things by the child's connection with their own mm-hmm. conscience under those circumstances. Mm-hmm. So it's actually to benefit of the parents as well. Yeah. Sorry, you, I don't want to interrupt you, but um, um, it seems to me there's sort of like three scenarios. So the first scenario where you talk about where the parent is sort of emotionally shut down and actually in reality quite resistive to um something that they and they verbally give their child a message that is in it's it's like saying no it's really good to eat apples while saying i hate apples and they're bad you know you know that that's going to be very threatening for the child very threatening because they feel one thing they hear another they're confused which one do i please it feels the emotion actually feels stronger to me than the words and yet uh, you know it can be very daunting for a child and it requires a brave child to do the right thing mm. under those circumstances. And, you know, most children aren't brave because they haven't been taught to be brave. Yes. So, so, you know, it's highly unlikely they will. Yes. Mm. So if we use the apples analogy, I hate apples, you should eat apples. And then, then there's like the third scenario, which is like, I love apples, eat the apples. And it's going to be easy for the child to engage with whatever the new thing is. What about this... It seems to me the first one's quite damaging for the for the kid 
Yeah. The middle one, what about this scenario where the parent says, honestly, look, child, I'm not in love with apples. I have a theory that they could be good for you <laughs> and I'm leaving it up to you here. Um, but in all honesty, I'm okay if you go for apples, but I'm going to, I know I'm not yet, you know. Well, and if we use the conscience of God's truth or whatever in that middle so ground. So saying, I'm okay with the conscience, but I'm not really certain how to use it and I'm yes. not sure. And, and sometimes I'm scared so the, so and I'm angry about it. So the parents telling the truth about yes. how they feel yep. about the conscience. Yeah. Well, again, if the parent withdraws their love from the child when the child exercises its conscience. Mm -hmm. Its connection to the conscience, yep. Yeah. yeah. Then, then, of course, the child is going to resist exercising that connection. Yes. So, so it does depend a lot on whether the, the parent is sincere about their mm. allowance of the child yeah. to exercise the, its connection with its own conscience. Mm -hmm. and, and this is where self-reflection as a parent is required, obviously. Yes, and sincerity. Yeah, so, yeah. so it's, it's great if the parent says like, yeah, like I'm just angry about it, to be honest, <laughs> or whatever, you know, they, they, whatever they honestly feel about it is good yeah. Yeah. Uh, to, to state. But if they withdraw love from the child after they've given that information, mm. when the child exercises the connection with the conscience, mm -hmm. then that, of course, is going to make it difficult for the child to continue to exercise its connection mm. with its conscience. Mm. And that would go for any aspect of God's truth that a parent was educating their child about. Every aspect, yeah. actually. Yeah. Every aspect. Every time the parent withdraws love from the child, the child feels that as a punishment, really, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and as a result, will be highly tempted to avoid the whole the whole area of endeavour, yeah, uh, or the whole area of discussion, or what whatever it is that is going on, yeah. And uh, and then we need to understand that as parents that it's our emotions and our withdrawal of love through anger and other kinds of emotions that causes and modifies the child's behavior. Mm -hmm. So these parents that go, oh, I've never hit my child, you know, and think they're wonderful parents, can often be abusing their child emotionally every single moment mm. because they're imposing all these emotional demands upon the child. And, and every time the child doesn't do them, they withdraw love from the child. And, and that can be far more damaging than an occasional smack sometimes. Yeah. Because at least with the occasional smack, the child knows that's harmful and it's bad and, and mm. the parent's wrong, you know. Yeah, Most uh, of the time, in, in a lot retrospect of the time, at least. In retrospect at yeah. least. Whereas with the other highly manipulative process, yeah. children often are, have a deep sense of confusion mm. about whether the process was harmful or not. Yes. So, you know, we need to make sure as parents that our emotional state is such that we're going to love our child even if they exceed mm -hmm. our own abilities mm -hmm. and they exceed our own worth in society's eyes mm -hmm. and they exceed our own capacity to do anything. And, and to be frank, if, if we have uh, taught our child well, hopefully they will exceed yeah. us yeah. because it, you know, they would hopefully have then less impositions upon their life that constrain their life and therefore be free mm -hmm. to discover new things in a more, at a more rapid pace and to develop in their relationship with God and their relationship with others more rapidly. Yeah. So, you know, it, it really does depend a lot on the parent's attitude. So, yes, the parent education can help the child is the answer to the question, mm. but we've got to be very careful about what we define education to, to be. be. Yeah. yeah, very good. Thank mm -hmm. you. All right. Is it possible for parents to create a false conscience in their children? Yes. So again, in session 11 of our repentance and forgiveness information, we covered a lot about parents' impact upon the child and, its, and the operation of the child's conscience. Yeah. Um, yes, it is possible to almost create like a false conscience, if we could call it that. Mm -hmm. And what we mean by that is in, in the parent frequently is trying to replace God's rules mm. with their rules. Mm. The parent wants the child to, in, instead of accepting God's rules for living, most parents want the child to accept the parent's rules for living. Yeah. Now, by imposing this upon the child so strongly, what they're really doing is they're trying to replace the conscience mechanism 
with a mechanism where the child is only sensitive yes. to the parents' emotions and their parents' beliefs mm -hmm. rather than being sensitive to God's emotions and God's beliefs, yeah. God's truth, right? And, and this puts the child in this place where now they're no longer in tune with the conscience mechanism and now they are so intent in only tuning into their parents and their parental demands and their parents, the parents' emotions and the parents' feelings and satisfying them day after day after day after day in order to never have love withdrawn from the child. Yeah. And that, that is a very damaging thing to do to our conscience. Mm. And most people on earth have had it done to them, mm. unfortunately. And, and what we end up doing is replacing the mechanism or the connection that we could have had with God with a connection with our parent, mm. even if we hate our parent. Yeah. That's the irony of it. Sad, isn't even it? if yeah. we hate our parent, mm. we're frequently connected to them in this way, yeah. connected to their beliefs. And, and frequently we're rebelling even against their belief. But, yeah. but it causes us to not hear what God's saying about the truth of every one of our actions. Because we, we're just far more attuned to the messages of the parent, the earthly parent, and we're feeling like right and wrong is defined by that parent or that set of parents. Or we flip the right and wrong. We can say what they think is right, we think is wrong and so forth. Yeah. We rebel, in other yes. words. And, and often we rebel on some things and not rebel on others, of mm. course. Mm. But, but we're inside of us, we've built a, a new regime of truth, yes. so-called truth, which is only a reflection of how our parents have interacted with us yep. rather than the truth. Yep. And, and so we're now no longer open mm -hmm. to God's truth about the matter. And we only care about either what the parents did or didn't do or what we believe the parents should have done or didn't do. You mm -hmm. know, and, and, and that's all we're focused on. We're not mm -hmm. focused on any other thing coming to us. And, and now we are, it's like we now have an umbilical cord with our parent, which will often remains until we die. Yeah. And um, connected to them either in rebellion or acceptance, or usually a combination of both. Mm -hmm. And, and yet, and we, and as a result, we, we, we our, our, uh, the mechanism of our conscience has been damaged from such a young age. And when I say damaged, obviously it's emotions that have, uh, from our parents that have damaged it. The, the, it's not a technical place of damage because no. it's all still there, but, but we're so detuned from it now yep. be, because of this reconnection with our parent mm. and, and to their demands and their truth and their experiences and their beliefs and so yep. forth. And, and we feel it's essential for our survival. So it's, so it's a primal fear. Mm -hmm. And, and that causes us now to completely detune from the conscience mechanism. And because con con quite often the conscience, God is showing us via the conscience that our parents are wrong mm. and we just don't want to hear it. Because obviously, and perhaps we can talk now about how this actually happens, because you're saying most people on earth have had it happen. So uh, most parents must be doing some fairly serious things mm. to create this situation because you know, it would make sense then that there must be some threat upon the child if they differ from the parent. Uh, of course there is. Otherwise, it, there wouldn't be such a severe, uh, you know, attunement with the parent and detunement from the mechanism. Yeah, now in session 11, we did discuss the kinds of threats that mm. a child has emotionally. Mm. And it doesn't have to be anything even physical. But, yep. but unfortunately, there is a lot of physical things that does go on. If you mm. think about it, there's often overt physical, emotional, sexual, and uh, spiritual abuse mm. of the child. Yeah. And often it's overt, you know, it's like yeah. just way out there. And because in, in the societies we live in today, it, we, 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 we respect parents too much. In other words, what we say is they're their parent. They're allowed to do this abusive thing. Mm because they're their parent, you mm. know, and they're allowed to smack their child or they're allowed to abuse their child in this way, or they're allowed to, you know, they're allowed to do this really like toxic abuse of children rather than just going, hang on a sec as a society, you're an abusive parent. We take the child away from you. We re-educate you as a parent. Mm. When you've re-educated yourself and you demonstrate through your actions, you're re-educated, you get your child back, you know, if your child wants to go. <laughs> <laughs> they get to have a choice they get to have a choice yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah just like they should have yes and and but we don't do that so this overt 
physical, emotional, spiritual abuse uh, obviously has a huge effect on the child. Mm. You know, the child is going to really struggle to connect to its conscience under those conditions, yeah. right? Then you've got the covert ones, which which is sometimes even worse, where mm. where it's all covert physical, emotional, or sexual abuse. Mm. Covert in the sense that nobody really sees it going on. It's hard to determine. Well, and, and you should say, like a lot of um, it's manipulative. O- what we're calling overt here with the physical, uh, emotional, sexual, you mean actual, like physical actions. Whereas, so they might be covert as in covered over to the rest of society, but they're right. happening. Like physical actions yes. that are actually happening. Yes. yes. There's emotions and actions in harmony happening to affect the child. Yeah, well, it's re- very. The child is a very is very certain that the parent thinks a certain way. Yes, <laughs> and we talk about this covert thing. We're talking about the fact that there's a lot of messages that are unspoken. There's a lot of implication. Yeah. There's a lot of manipulation of emotional conditions within uh, from the parents. Manipulation towards... of physical violence, manipulation of spiritual violence, manipulation of love, manipulation so of threats of threat, those things. Threats and, of loss yeah. of love, um, you know, uh, threats of even of oh, se- sexual uh, abuse in the sense of a mother being connected to a son or a father, a daughter, but not it not being a sexual relationship, but, but it is a special, special relationship, yeah. you know, yeah. replacement of the soulmate relationship. Yeah. These kind of overt uh, covert mm. uh, ways of abusing children also have a very large impact and they're even more confusing for the child. Very confusing. Because because the child can't work out, is this wrong or is it right? I don't know. And uh, if the child doesn't have a connection to God through the conscience, God can't tell them, mm. this is wrong, this is wrong again, this mm. is wrong again. Uh, though sometimes a child, a young child will feel it. So mm. they feel icky, you know, mm. they feel uh, ashamed or sometimes mm-hmm. and things like that of, of things going on and they don't understand why but the parents not educating as to why they feel what they feel yeah. and the parent feels that they shouldn't be ashamed of course and so they finish up detuning from all that as well yeah uh, and it's very damaging to the child and pro- possibly in many cases more damaging than the overt abuse in mm. some ways you know mm. and not that overt abuse is not damaging it's terribly damaging yeah so Given the fact that the child has now experienced these two sets, if you like, of... Uh, well, one of the, one of them, at least. And, and frequently a, 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 a combination of both, you know, yeah. where you get some, you know, most mm. par- people smack their child at some point, you mm. know. Uh, it's rare for them to not. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, most, most people uh, try to punish their children. Yeah if the child doesn't agree with them, mm. whether that punishment is physical or, or violent or whether it's just go to your room, mm. it's still punishment and the withdrawal of love. So, <laughs> Yeah, so, so you're saying every time there's been these kind of abusive actions where love has been withdrawn or threats have been or there's been a physical action, all of that, there's like a forcing upon the child that they must accept what's happening as correct and good and right and deserving or, or, or and all of those things usually mm-hmm. um and so this is impacting then upon the child's understanding of what is right and wrong what is good yeah. and bad and it's well known in psychology today that if a child feels a level of fear yeah it's very hard to educate the child yeah and and of course you know the conscience mechanism is god's way of educating the child mm. and as soon as the parent puts the child in a condition of fear of any kind obviously now God's ability to share truth with the child is, is damaged. Mm-hmm. And, and it's very, very hard for, for the child to connect to the conscious mechanism, let alone follow it. Mm. Um, so it's a very damaging process. And, uh, and so this results, the result is really what we could call a false conscience, where the child is just either in rebellion of, towards the parent's condition or in acceptance of the parent's mm. condition. And uh, and they've basically now replaced God, yeah, with the parent. Yeah, and I think my experience of it has been like, uh, if I do something that my I, that I'm very well aware of what my parents' view is right and wrong. By the time I'm, you know, uh, well, very well, most, young, really. Most children <laughs> before they go to school, they're very aware. Yeah, mm-hmm. and for about a whole range of of ideas. Yeah, social, sexual. Um, educational, educational, occupational, scientific, yeah, every, every just area. spiritual. Every you mm-hmm. know, there's a very clearly defined, although maybe not 
uh, you maybe not intellectually aware. It's not a self-awareness in the child no. that they know these things, but there is feelings that they are aware of. Yeah. yeah, and it's saying, this is right, that's wrong, this is right, that's wrong, this is right, that's wrong. And then if there's been heavy threats of either physical or emotional violence about differences within the child, yeah. then it's very, it, it's like that just becomes internalised. That's yeah. my conscience. Yeah. And there's a false conscience. You, you just live by that. Yeah. And most people are on autopilot. And even when your parents die, you're still living by it. And you're teaching your kids by then that's, to live by right. the same thing. That's right. Often yeah. by the same rules. Yeah. So basically what happen, what's happened in society is that most parents have replaced God's voice with their voice. Yeah. In, no matter where the child, the child is. No matter, yeah. So no matter where the child is. God's voice is no longer able to be heard mm. and it's only the parents voice and society's voice that is able to be heard yeah yeah so that's obviously a very damaging thing to do to your children very damaging mm. yeah okay and then the removal of the false con conscience obviously requires the removal of the emotional reasons for its cause and so that's a lot of un undoing, isn't it? Oh, yeah. yeah, it's like the child has to be open to him, become open to its own emotional experience. It usually has a lot of fear to experience, uh, anger first usually, mm -hmm. then fear and then grief yeah. to experience. And now it has the opportunity mm -hmm. now to start reconnecting with God through the conscience. So, and meanwhile, the actual parents may be still attacking, no matter what age you are. Frequently they are. Yeah. Yes. But if you try to do this process in their company, it's almost impossible. Well, it is impossible. Yeah. And so this is why I find people who are living with their parents, uh, you know, you're going to find it really hard to work through your stuff, you know, yeah. because it, you're often living with the parent's construct. Yeah. Unless the parent is ahead of you and, and on the path changes. towards God, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you're not going to be able to do deal with anything. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, it's a very damaging pro process uh, to, of what to do to the child, and it's very hard. You've made it now very difficult for the child mm -hmm. to exercise its ability to hear God's voice by the conscience. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so how is a child affected by parents detuning the child from the conscience? And a lot of what we'll say here, it's sort of we've covered... Um, in our previous question about the creation of a false conscience because obviously that's a form of detunement isn't it from yeah although I, i'd say to me this question is more about um you know in the previous question we talked about the physical creation of what seemingly a false conscience mm -hmm. which, which is more of a mechanism type of a question i suppose yep but this is more about how is the child affected mm. and and i i think like we need to focus on Firstly, the parental motivations mm. to detune the child. Mm -hmm. And then how, how does the child feel? Like ha, what, what happens after that? You know, mm. what, what's happened to the child after that? So if, if you look at the parental motivations, uh, uh, the parental motivations it can only be classified generally as selfish mm. in that the parents want the child to just believe what the parents believe, accept mm. what the parents feel mm -hmm. and, and do what the parents ask them to do. Yeah. So the parents have this underlying demand that, of their children that you satisfy my life. Yeah. I'm, I had you, I created you, is, it, is it often said to them, in fact. Yeah. And you need to do what I demand. Why do I have to do this, Daddy? Because I told you to. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Is, is a big reason given, mm. uh, uh, which is no reason, of course. <laughs> And, and then I guess in addition to that, you have the, the feeling within the, the same parent that, and, and while this is happening, I don't want you to expose anything in me that's unloving. I don't want you to tell me that I'm doing the wrong thing. Mm. And if you believe I'm doing the wrong thing, I am going to punish you somehow. Yeah. I am. And when, when parents get into this mode, they're, they're willing to resort to quite severe punishment, mm. right? whether it's violent f physical punishment or violent emotional abuse, mm. it, it can get quite violent. Mm. And, uh, and even if it's not violent, it's still withdrawal of love, which is hard enough for the child to handle anyway. Yeah. So, so children who listen to God's voice via their conscience now, man, what kind of difficulties do they have with their parents? Like, yeah. <laughs> it's like you know, obviously they're going to be confronting their parent almost every minute of the child's life. Yeah. Now that is very hard to do. Mm. If you've ever lived with a person that you have to confront every minute, 
of your life. <laughs> it's pretty hard. It is very hard, yeah. even for an adult to do. Yes, a with another adult. Yeah, yeah with yeah. another adult. A child would find it impossible, yeah. impossible to yeah. do. So, so the poor child, its conscience is still operating, but it's got to numb itself out to it. It's got to mm. stop, stop listening to it. Mm -hmm. So because the parent's voice is just screaming at them. Mm. Even if they're not saying anything, there's this emotional exchange. It's an emotional voice yep. screaming at the child, you do what I want mm. or else. And you think how right? I think as well. Yeah, you think how I think, you believe what I believe, mm. you feel what I feel, yeah. you pander to my feelings, mm -hmm. you respond to my feelings, you do what I'm asking you to do, mm. and you guess what I'm asking you to do even. Yeah. It goes down to that level yes. usually. And, and it's, uh, you know, the poor child is like, you know, imagine a young child, and, and to be honest for most of our listeners, most of you have been through this, so you've got to have some compassion for this yeah. yourself as a little child having yeah. this experience, right? Yes. So, so here we are, we've got this child now in this condition where the parents have had this intense amount of emotional demand upon the child. Yeah. And the child has to live almost for the parent. Mm. Like, uh, 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 and eventually when they become a teenager, they start trying to break away from that. But a parent usually doesn't let you break away completely without there being quite mm. a severe amount of emotional turmoil, right? <laughs> yeah. I, I guess here though as well, we can talk about the fact that um, obviously there's, ex there's an extreme of what we've just been discussing. And then there's going to be relative um you know it may not be as severe in some families some parents i've seen the most loving people who think they're the most <laughs> loving parents on the planet yeah. and they're doing this yes so i have never seen ever seen a, a parent who doesn't do this okay so then so. what are the factors that might change like obviously some people are more open to their conscience than others what are the factors that might because if everyone's been through this how do some make it out <laughs> marginally intact? Well, firstly, can I say to the parents that if they were more in tune with their own conscience, they couldn't even do it. Yeah. So, so that, that's so true. So, so that, that's, a, that's a definite truth because mm. God would be telling them, no, mm. you're, you're damaging my little son there yeah. or daughter there. Yeah. And, and what you're and doing. And you're doing it for selfish and reasons. And you're doing it because you're totally selfish. Yeah. Um, and and it's just, it's one of the worst things you can do. And mm. it's going to end up in a lot of pain for you. Mm. It, that's what God would be telling the parent. Mm. But the parent isn't listening, of course, because mm. the parent's just absorbed by their own behavior. So firstly, if the parent was in tune with its own conscience, mm. it, it wouldn't be doing these things. So, so, so the first thing the parent needs, and needs to really do is be in tune with their own conscience. But your question is like, how does it affect the child so more? Isn't yes, it? and and also what factors are in play that m mean that there's some. It, I'll read it. Well, well, well God still <laughs> loves the, God still loves a child, and so God's doing everything in God's power now to assist this poor little abused child of mm. His, right? And he, He's helping the child through the laws. He's helping the child. He's still trying to knock on the door of the conscience. Right, and he's and he's going to send uh, many times. He does. He, he, when I say many times, every time, any child in this situation, he's always got a spirit that God has sent to them to mm. assist them to get through this particular drama. And mm. um, so God's doing a lot of things to try and help the child. But of course, the parental influence on the child is so great that often the child doesn't feel these other influences, mm. or if they do cannot respond to the other influences without getting more damage from the parent. Hmm. So it's a, it's a difficult situation for the child unless the child grows to be an adult. And then, of course, God's still trying to do those same things to connect to, connect to, the, to his hmm. child. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, well, we did list some things here. Do you want me to mention them? Or do yeah, you feel I think that so, because, not, uh, uh, you know, we want to see how the child is affected by it. And, you know, Obviously, the child feels the influence of the parents. So now the child feels that it's got to do what the parent wants. So that's a big influence on it. Instead of the child feeling that it have its own life, mm -hmm. it feels it's got to have the parent's life mm. or, or the parent's definition of a good life. Mm. And, you know, that, that, that doesn't let the child develop uh, in any way. So you, what you see there is children going off and 
like trying to become a football star while while really they feel like they just want to be an artist or you know yeah. you, you frequently see things like that job All the time. job yeah. stuff going on but you also see it in emotion like they're not allowed to have a relationship they want to have because the parents won't let them have that relationship mm. without there being an attack you know, you see it a lot with uh, gay people, you know, mm. where, where, uh, where a homosexual man or a homosexual woman, she can't, she can't express her sexual attraction as a teenager or as an mm -hmm. adult um, because the parents just won't let them. In. And quite frequently that goes on way into their late, you know, into their late life even, mm. you know, it's, sad, it's very sad. Um, there's so many aspects, though. they can't, they can't, put in new idea or concept into society because it will disagree with their parents ones mm. and, and uh, just mm. th they can't they can't uh, make emotion uh, make decisions in their personal life without gaining the approval or agreement of the parents mm. anymore and therefore they then extend that onto society so they can't do that with society either so they can't be an individual mm. they, they have to meet the collective demand mm. and then you see nowadays all these laws getting created where there's so much law being created to force collective people into doing things mm -hmm. uh, that are unnecessary mm. um, and also unloving obviously mm. um, and and don't correct the underlying condition of a lack of love mm. either and when so, we start making laws that force people where that's an even bigger extension isn't it it's sort of like saying well, you were all going to have this conscience on this matter and it's going to be in law as a society now yeah that we're going to and do. why does a law society even think that that's possible mm. because their parents thought mm. it was possible so, so so just finally on this question then um obviously there are some people on earth who have been um, controlled and manipulated in certain ways, but they feel more autonomous in others because there is some innovation that happens on the planet. And there, there are Most some people the time, who though, feel... it's only in line or in competition with their parent. All right. So when I say in line with, what I mean is the parents go, oh, the parent yeah. accepts science, so you're allowed to exceed in science, mm. but you're not allowed to exceed as an artist. Mm. You, you have to exceed in science. Yeah. Or... It's in competition with the parent. In other words, the parent succeeded in science, so you decide you're going to really shove it to your parents yeah. and prove that you're better than them at science. Of course. You yeah. know what I mean? There's yeah. that, that, totally. that kind of attitude as well. Totally. But, but in both cases, you're being completely controlled. So, so do you feel then or do you not feel that there's, there's influences in the child's environment as they're growing? So um, how abusively the child enforced their influence? whether the child was manipulated um, through just one method like physical emotional or sexual or whether it was a combination or if there was another influence in in the child's environment yeah, where... obviously there's a wide spectrum here we're talking to very yes. dark to lightish yes. in the spectrum you know of parent of parenting yes and and but but to be frank the majority of us is somewhere in the middle there but it's still very, very damaging because it results in almost everyone on this planet being in the middle of the hells in the first fear of the spirit world when it, they arrive. When they arrive. So yeah. that's proof that it's very damaging. It's very right? dark. Yeah. So it's still very dark from God's perspective. Yes. Um, and we need to see that. But, but some of those factors that I listed, and including the child's personal aspiration, uh, if they can manage to keep some of that intact through that process, Yep. Those things are going to be factors that may assist a person to Yeah, there's be also less other factors like they might detuned. go to school and have a really nice teacher yeah. and that teacher might help them. You don't forget they're, they're guided still by God. Their God, God is assigning their guide. And their spirit guide is often trying to arrange things for the child without the parent's approval and without the parents knowing. Yeah. So, so, that, so that the child at least has some alternate experience. Yes. So that they can compare their alternate experience with their actual experience with yeah. their parents. Yeah. And the, these things help the child now open their mind up to potentially other concepts and situations. But unfortunately, the conscience is a very out there con concept. Like it's a it's a very unique concept and very and poorly very, understood and, and and poorly understood and virtually unknown on the planet. Yeah. So it's highly unlikely mm. that that mechanism is ever going to be explored after this experience. Yeah. Without there being some education happening, mm. like the education we're hopefully. 
giving our listeners at the time at the moment yeah yeah sad isn't it Mm. yeah yeah Yeah, it's very sad what happens to children Mm. on on so many levels and and while as adults we can't blame people for that we have to learn to forgive which Mm -hmm. is a part of what we need to discuss in our forgiveness uh, and repentance sessions when we talk you know when we're giving answers to people yeah we we must learn to forgive because if we don't learn to forgive Mm. this behavior of our parents we will remain attached to Mm -hmm. this behavior of our parents yeah all of our life we will probably repeat it even in our own children and and so this is how it just keeps going like a snowball down to each new generation Mm. we need to forgive in order to let go of the that kind of behavior and and open up to god's truth about the matter about how things should occur Mm. and god wants parents to parent like god parents (laughs) Um, but obviously there's not too many of us that have done that or are even able to do that given our condition yeah yeah Mm. how did you feel when you kind of um went through this process in you know in reevaluating your own parenting with your boys and yeah i found it very distressing yeah um you know to realize all the things that you've done as a parent that have been highly damaging you know both of my boys who are now adults are still dealing with some of that damage i don't uh accept any blame uh, uh, sorry any uh anger-based attack from them yeah uh, particularly when it's just abusive yeah. but but at the end of the day um i am very aware that it you know there was a large amount of damage mm. and and to be frank um i was an, probably a lot better parent than the average parent mm. um so and, and yet it, 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 it often still guts me a bit you know yeah. to think about the damage that's been done and how how tristan and caleb are struggling to to address some of this damage mm. and, and in and, and in my younger son's case not even aware of yeah. the damage um clearly you would have made attempts to make them aware of how of, how of you damaged them yeah, how did you do that uh, through discussion you know yeah. being being honest in the discussion about them yeah uh, often though they think that you've damaged them in ways that you haven't yes and that you haven't damaged them in ways that you have yeah. Yeah. and this is the other problem is because at the time you might have had the human view of parenting yeah, yeah. and now you have god's view of parenting yeah. the way god feels you've damaged them is different to the way they feel you've damaged yeah. them <laughs> so it's almost like you're going through a process with them it sort of not as connected with your conscience and and teaching them this is right this is wrong this is right what i'm doing here is the right thing what i'm doing here is wrong thing what you're doing there well, that's I, the worst thing i did was model to my boys the way they should treat women yeah that, that by far has had the biggest impact in their life yeah uh, than almost anything else i have done yeah and and i the way i treated women, women was i pandered to women i did whatever the woman wanted i protected the woman uh you know the woman didn't who, who was uh, didn't have to do anything really in, yeah. in my company she learnt to dominate the uh, mm-hmm. you know whoever i was with learnt to dominate me and the boys mm-hmm. and uh um yeah a, a very damaging thing i did there mm-hmm. and um it, it the boys are still bearing the consequence of working through that emotionally yeah and both of them have relationships with have had relationships with very like angry demanding women who they feel they had the panda to then they treat it differently some one of them tunes out and the other doesn't you know he just sort of does as much as he can and then he zones out by playing some games and so forth i I suppose um what i was going to say though is like in that early process and so you use the example of of the women and also i know um you know you, you shared with me about providing you know you felt you had to provide for them a lot and um and so there was yeah, that was a lot during the teenage years where I started to be a bit more successful business-wise mm-hmm. and I had the funds to give them things. I then made the mistake of giving them things without them really appreciating how yeah. what it took to get those particular things. Yeah. And that created its own problems. But that, that was a minor problem, really, in comparison to these other problems yeah. of how I modelled my relationships with women. Yeah. yeah. But what I was going to say is when you're in that process of teaching them and instilling that right and wrong that you because you said you kind of had 
your view of what a good parent was and what a good man was. A lot of it was driven and, by guilt, I realised afterwards. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And then you, then you kind of really opened up to God's view of parenting. Mm. So now a lot of the things that you thought were good and you instilled in them is good, uh, now they're still like feeling at a soul level that's that good. it's good, it's yeah, good. Those, and, and yeah, you're and trying to say no. My younger son in particular, he, he just he, he wants it. You know? yeah. <laughs> and, and he's he yeah. gets angry when you try and challenge yeah, he's that. Very in angry him. with me at the yeah. moment. So, yeah. Um, and and yet there's other things where you where you feel like no, that was a good thing, but because uh, or well, what I'm doing now is a better thing, but because there were kind of uh, raised with this error thing that you had, they feel yeah. like, no, I'm entitled, I'm entitled to this thing that you're no longer giving me. That's right. And, and it's, it's quite... Um, and it's very challenging. It's quite them, courageous so. what you've done, I feel. And, and Yeah, but, uh, you know, it is difficult as a parent to go through, you know, realising that now, um, you know, you pray a lot about God helping them because it's like, because um, you know that the damage has been done and, and, and there's not... You, you can you could attempt to write it, but even as you write it, because you're bringing your life into more harmony with God's way, mm. often there's a sense of confusion in your children yeah. after that because they you taught them a certain way and now you're not even doing it. Yeah. Uh, and that creates also some confusion in an adult child I imagine. as well. So A very disconcerting feeling. Yeah, for, and yeah. so, you know, you have to have compassion for that, mm. and, and I do um, have compassion for that, I think. Mm. I can only ever, with, with my older son, just I, I can't ever remember really being angry with him at all. Mm. And my younger son, I can only ever remember once being angry with him. Yeah. Um, but, um, and, and I didn't, like I was, as an adult, I mean. And, yeah. and, and uh, but, you know, it, it's still, you know, you still feel bad about those situations. Yeah. 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 Mm. yeah. Mm. But you sure. also have to uphold God's truth about the matter now that you know it. Yeah. And that's where it becomes a bit confusing for your children. Yeah, and you can't also... Um, you can't make them accept that either. You can't make them accept it, but also you can't... You have to acknowledge your mistakes, but equally you can't um, create a, another abusive dynamic where you become the villain in their life and accept blame for things that that you didn't do. Yeah, yeah. That you didn't do. So or you that to... they now think you should do. Yeah. Because... But you know yeah. through your conscience that you can't do. Yes. You know, so it's a it's a very difficult situation because you, you taught them to believe the wrong thing. Yeah. Now they believe it and now you've accepted the right thing. And now they believe you're wrong. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and there's, what can you do about that? It's, yeah, it's very it's hard. hard. And how can you really uh, repent uh, well, you can you, repent. You, no, what are the? You can repent for that. Yes, and you can go through the process of repentance for that. Uh, and yeah. you know, I, I've done a lot of that. But but you can't fix it that, with in them. That's right. You can't. You can't because it, it's in them now. That's what I'm going to say. Like in your process of repentance, you naturally want to remedy the wrong that you've done. But you can't necessarily, so you just you have try, to take you try, that to God. But, but it, it has you? to be driven by their desire, doesn't yes. it? So, yeah. you know, if they don't want to hear it, now what can you say? Like, yeah. you know, um, you know, I've tried to educate, but mm. but um, my, my oldest son Tristan, most people would be aware that he's, he's around still, and yeah. and he's running programs and so forth and things like that, and and he he's he's like accepted the changes I've mm. made. But my younger son, he's, he, he, he feels he still wants me to be the old fella. The, the, the old, old, the old. And the old person wasn't good enough in his eyes either. So, yeah. <laughs> so it's quite confusing for him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Mm. There's yeah. a lot of, uh, I can see as well, where um, very often when we have a strong set of emotions and triggered often by a parent changing or something, and we, we don't know where to appropriate those feelings or we're afraid to put those feelings where they might actually belong and we can end up attributing them to other people and other parents or yeah. attributing false parts of it because yeah. we're afraid of other things. And it's, but my, it's very my younger son often accuses me of things that I did when he wasn't even born yet. So, yeah. <laughs> so obviously he's heard that from other people yeah. and then attributed that to his life. Yeah, you know, so. yeah. Mm. yeah. 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 Mm. anyway. All right, well, thank you for talking about that. Mm. How can I reconnect with my conscience? 
Well, you know, obviously, as we've been saying all the way through this series about conscience in the repentance and forgiveness series, obviously, we're suggesting that the majority of people aren't connected to their conscience at all, yeah. or very, very little. Mm -hmm. And and obviously, education helps, you know, so, mm. you know, the education we're hopefully providing through the series and we'll provide more education in the future. Obviously, that will help. Yeah. But um, it does require taking some action and some experiments and doing some things, doesn't it? Yep. And we talked about all of those things that need to be done in the session site like from uh, session nine to 11. Yep. So um, rather, rather than regurgitate them yep. all too much, um, I, think, I think if we just sort of summarise... Mm -hmm. um, well, it makes yeah, sense. Let's in terms say, of referring to the sessions, exactly, um, is probably our best course of action here. So, if if we summarise, firstly, what we've established is the problem that we have a lack of education, and that we have emotional injury surrounding like desire to please parents and society. So, we established that in the previous sessions. Mm -hmm. Um, our desires are warped and out of harmony with love and truth. We want to sin. Yep, we want to sin, yeah. <laughs> uh, we, we value the avoidance of pain and fear over truth. Mm. So uh, clearly all those things have created a problem. So we're going to have to do things to change, uh, reverse that Yeah, so situation. let's look at it. So firstly, we need to develop some desire to change it, don't we? And, mm -hmm. then when, and then develop some of the desires we mentioned in session 11, which will help connect us back with our mm -hmm. with our soul based mechanism of the conscience yeah and so that we can hear god's voice via the conscience so developing those desires are key and we the fundamental desires we talked about before that will help us in other areas of our yes. life as well yeah. and uh, rather than mentioning them all again just we'd like to refer everyone back to that, that session to watch that session again because mm -hmm. so. that, that'll help so if, so number one focus on changing your desires in harmony with what we mentioned in session 11. That was session 10 we talked session about 10, desires. Sorry. Yep. 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 Second thing is remove the emotions and feelings that, have, that, that we have that are opposing yeah. the just... operation of the conscience. Mm. Now, you know, we talked about a lot of those, a lot of them come from parents, a lot of them come from society, yep. and a lot of them come from our own desires and decisions as well like yeah. the, the, the desire to sin for example mm -hmm. the desire to just do the wrong thing because we, we think it's rewarding yeah it is in itself something that's going to detune us from our conscience so mm. the the lack of desire for truth you know this is another desire so we need to make sure we remove the emotions that prevent us from having these desires yeah. you know and that that that's an emotional process we've talked with people for many years about emotional processing mm -hmm and the reason for it, because it's all about blocking you yeah. to progress. Yeah. You need to get rid of this old baggage so mm -hmm. that you're no longer blocked to change. Yeah. And, and that has to happen. Yeah. The third thing obviously is, to, is the education process. Yeah. And, and the education process comes from a number of sources. Obviously we're attempting to educate uh, our, our brothers and sisters now, mm -hmm. but, but God can give you education about it, but that requires you connecting to the conscience, obviously. Um, you know, it, there's not a lot of material on earth available about the conscience. Mm. So, so that's going to require what I would classify as some, not meditation in a new age spiritual yeah, sense, yeah. but some, some deep meditation and thought about, okay, what is this mechanism? Yeah. How does it work? How am I going to experiment with it? What what do I need to learn about it? Uh, how do I tell the difference? I, what's Things been like my life experience so far? Like, has there conscience? Can I think of a time where it could have been the conscience, yeah. or, or maybe yeah. even God can tell you a time when yeah. it was when the, when you yeah. did listen to it, yeah. so that you can connect to how it feels and mm. things like that. So that that's an important part. And then the fourth thing, and probably uh, the most important in a lot of ways, yeah. is attempt to listen to it and. <laughs> act upon it yeah because if you don't act upon it you will not benefit from it yeah and in fact it's just going to bother you. <laughs> <laughs> so you know you're far better off uh taking some action uh on it so that so that you can measure mm -hmm. and that will develop your faith in it yeah uh, and once you've developed some faith in it and you understand it better, and you understand that it's not spirits, uh, and, and you're not connecting to spirits anymore mm -hmm. about it, 
and and you realize that you're going to have to have a very sincere desire for this yeah and um, once that starts to happen you'll start opening up to the conscience again the more you open up to it the more you're going to enjoy the process mm. because because you get a bit of truth you'll test out that truth you'll realize it is truth it become a part of yourself and you go wow that gives me a bit more confidence mm -hmm. you find out another thing ah oh, that's the truth and and you'll be open to hearing things that you didn't want to hear yeah that's going to be a good sign yeah and you're hearing things that you didn't want to hear and you're going ah oh, okay and, and and you can feel it's information it's not being delivered in an antagonistic way which it would be if it was from spirits or whatever yeah but but you can feel that it's a loving intent to just inform you mm -hmm. and if you go through that process eventually you'll get open to your conscience and if you obviously receive some of god's love through this process that is going to help you markedly yeah to open to your conscience because god's love raises uh, as i spoke to a spirit yesterday if mm -hmm. people listen to that recording i think uh, Stuart to Stuart you raise your condition of love and which is uh, by removing some of the blockage and also receiving some of God's love. Now your awareness expands. And so your ability to utilize the truth coming via the conscience also expands. Yeah. And, and, and so now your conscience, the truth that you're able to get, grasp and get even just intellectually expands. Yeah. And, and if you raise your level over and this continues to happen, mm -hmm. then you can see growth is inevitable. Mm -hmm. mm. So yeah. that's what I would suggest to our listeners to what to do about the conscience. Obviously, the conscience is going to have a large bearing on forgiveness and repentance mm. because the conscience is going to be able to tell you clearly what it is that you need to forgive in yeah. others yeah. and what you personally need to repent for. Mm -hmm. So it's going to have a large bearing. That's on, right. And on, on that discussion. And in the previous question, you know, we talked about you going through this process with your boys. And if you weren't really connected to you, to the conscience about what it, and to God, obviously, but, you know, about what it was that you'd done wrong and what it was that you'd done right and what it is that you're doing right now that's wrong and what it is that you're doing right now that's right, it could get very confusing because you've changed from the guy who raised them and, and they are now grown men and they have ideas and they, you know, they feel this is wrong. And unless you were in tune with something like this source of truth from God, mm. it could turn into a big mess, couldn't yeah. it? It, you, it, it? Very easily. Yeah. yeah. And the beauty of doing it with God is that if, if your children finish up doing it with God as well, yeah. you'll eventually come to the same conclusion. That, and that's the lovely thing about watching you and Tris together, yeah. you know, is this how much harmony you guys have, not with each other, but with God's truth. Yeah. And that's brought you together. Yeah. yeah. So you end, up, you end up being on the same page again, yeah. even though this whole process meant you're on different pages at different stages. Yes. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but then you become, you, know, you get to be on the same page again. And, that, yeah. and that's wonderful because then you get to have a decent relationship yeah. with your brother. Yeah. You know, in this case, I've got two sons, so two brothers, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And and I'm looking forward to having a decent relationship with my other brother. Yeah. But uh, that's probably going to take a bit longer, I suggest. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Well, that concludes session 13 mm. of our um, series on forgiveness and repentance. Mm. <laughs> um, and that will be our last session about the conscience won't it we'll yeah. we'll move back now to forgiveness and repentance yeah. but perhaps if we just give a as we always do a bit of a summary yeah of what we've covered yep so sessions one to three talking about god's laws god's truth and god's truth concerning forgiveness and repentance and and also about how it feels emotionally yeah and and what the emotions are of the process of forgiveness and repentance yeah Four to eight, we focused on sowing and reaping and this understanding of what it's all about, yeah. compensation. It's in our life all the time. You know, uh, it's rewarding or penalising, but it's all there correcting us. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, obviously the sessions we've just finished, which is the conscience session. So we've talked about what the conscience is, how it works, the mechanism. Mm -hmm. we've, we've discussed how it's affected, how it's developed, and we've also hopefully now answered some questions that people have had yep. about it as well and and hopefully those things will help them recognize their conscience yeah yeah 
And next session, we're going to look at God's role in forgiveness and repentance. Yeah, God plays a huge role in it. Yeah. And so we need to understand God's role. Mm, yeah. 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 And then after that, we'll get on to some, some viewer questions. Yeah, which was the trigger for the entire series. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if you have questions relating to forgiveness and repentance, now based on what you've watched, yeah. uh, you can send them to FAQ at divinetruth.com. And if we receive them in time, we might be able to add them to this to this series. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, thanks everybody for your time and uh, energy listening to our conversation here. Hopefully, you've learnt more about the conscience, and also you're starting to have some ideas about how it might be used in forgiveness and repentance processes. That would be good. <laughs> and uh, and when we get to discuss, we're looking forward to discussion about God's role, and also to answering your questions. And, uh, and hopefully by the time we finish the series, there'll be a very strong understanding inside of you about what it is, in, what, what's involved in forgiveness and repentance and how the laws, particularly the compensatory laws, how the laws of love and also how this inbuilt mechanism you have in your soul of your conscience affects the entire process. Mm. So, so we're hopeful that you have a fairly complete summary of, of what's going on then with forgiveness and repentance. And when it comes to answering questions, they sh our answers should be able to be made quite succinct and refer to bits and pieces that we've already talked about, mm. which is what we're hoping to achieve. Yeah. So uh, hopefully you've enjoyed our conversation again. If It's been a long conversation, I know. Thank you to our recorders out the back there who Thanks, have been guys. patiently uh, recording everything, timing that we've done uh, so that you can have a good time codes on your on your videos when we put them up yeah. on YouTube. And chapters with titles yeah, so you know yeah. where it is. Yeah, so they do a lot of work there. So we'd like to thank them for that. And uh, and thank you, Darlin, for engaging the conversation with me for the last four hours. I've really enjoyed yeah. it. Thank yeah. you so much yeah. for your time, Darlin. Yeah. Yeah. See you later, everyone. Bye. Yeah.